you can try sea foam, you can try all sorts of chemicals, pretty much all chemicals are supposed to work but will not. Uh, how to decarbonize a flathead motor, it's actually very easy uh, that almost anyone can do it. So uh, I figure I will start out with this model here, of this rototillery, because you know I've been kind of wondering before I give it back to the guy because we basically are borrowing this thing and uh, well we told him we'll fix it up and get it because it was running like crap and stuff and it is running a little better now um, there's a few things I want to work with the governor a little bit but uh, I haven't really worked on it all that much so we're going to show you guys I'm going to show you guys how to decarbonize it because I realized when I looked down that cylinder that piston was pretty and the valves you can see they're encrusted with carbon so we're going to do that. So, uh, this is how you do it. Spark plug. After removing the spark plug, you're going to need a, uh, what is it, 916 socket. Nope, it's half inch socket. That's right. You need a half inch socket and you're going to remove each one of these. Actually, depending on the model, sometimes you also have to remove this shroud here. And there's, uh, uh one screw here. One screw here, well, bolt. And there's one usually back here. Sometimes there's some more depending on the size of the motor. This is only a 3.5 horse, so. So you're going to need to remove, you may need to remove those. Um, and then we'll take it from there. And those are all 3 eighths. It's also nice to have some sort of dish or even a lawnmower, or a push mower wheel or something to put your bolts in. So that way you don't lose. And then you just a little tug and it comes right off sometimes the magnets get stuck on there so just give it a little yank and it'll come off yeah we'll set this up here next using a crisscross pattern or so we're gonna remove all these head bolts uh, I'm trying to do this with one hand and you can feel them they'll break free a little bit and then after you do that turn it Till it's just a little bit loose and move on to the next one and stuff. Here's one other thing. Tecumseh usually you don't have this problem, but when you take them out of these head bolts out of uh, these Briggs and Strattons, you want to keep them in order because they're actually usually a lot, of, I mean not all the times, but a lot of times they're also different lengths. So um, you either want to pull them out and lay them out on the ground in, it, in the order of which you get them at, or you can keep them in. I actually recommend pulling them out and laying on the ground because when that head pops free and make sure you don't step on them when that head pops free sometimes they tend to jump off and you just set them in order like that of which they were in the head so this one goes back here and that one was towards the back here and I'm just lay them out like that alright and then this little thing will come off Next, you just want to tap on the head with something. Do not hit it real hard, and it will break free. Because usually the gasket they sticks together. And this is what you'll see. It's not too bad. If you should replace your head gasket after you do this, especially if you uh, if it kind of rips like it did on me. So that's a good idea to actually replace that head gasket afterwards. So, what I'll have to do is I'll just go get one from my tech shop tomorrow. But, this is how you take it off. Now, let me just uh, show you some carbon cleaning tips. If you did not rip your head gasket or anything when taking it, you can just go out and you can actually just get uh, some sealer on there and stuff. And that will, should do it for you. Uh, but, yeah. So just take a rag, and get off whatever you can get off. Huh, wasn't that bad. It was all pretty loose. And if you hold it, if you get the cylinder right up at the top dead center, you'd actually it won't go back down. The piston will, well, it's sometimes kind of hard, but you 
can push down on it, and sometimes it'll still slip, but look at how nicely that polished up. These are pretty coarse rags too, but yeah, we'll get that cleaner. Brake cleaner and carburetor and choke cleaner. Gets this stuff off just as good as it does with the actual, what it's made for. You just rub that on there. That's even getting shiny already. Look at that. Real nice. And there she is now. Sometimes it's pretty hard to get past here, but I figure I'm not going to worry about that for this video. So you have any, any questions or anything, I will make a part two on reassembly and stuff, and uh, like the thing and stuff, but you'll have to stay tuned for that. I don't have a head gasket that will fit a 3.5 right now, so uh, just stay tuned in, and we'll get this thing back together, hopefully tomorrow.